What's up, street lights? It's brother Matt, and I have got to get something off of my chest. So, when you start evangelizing, or honestly even just talking about God in public amongst other saints, or to people who don't believe, especially around people who don't believe, you hear a lot of the times that people just don't believe in God. And um, Psalms, uh, what is it, Psalm Teams 14 and 1 says, the fool says in his heart, there is no God. And uh, I was just thinking about it, and, you know, I was listening to a, a, a song while I was working out just a second ago, and I heard a verse that said, not believing in God is like not believing in gravity. So I kind of started to analyze that a little bit more uh, for myself. What did he mean by that? And uh, when you think about it, it's very easy for me to say gravity is not real. It would be very easy for me to say that because I can't see it. I never touched it. It can't be handed to me. It's not, it's not tangible or anything like that. Um, it's not real. Yet, it holds me to the ground every day. Um, but I'm not acknowledging that. So, for me, gravity is not real. I honestly don't care what proof there is. I really don't care what people say about the fact that gravity is real. I don't really don't care what scientists or people have proved about gravity. It's just not real. The difference with that and people saying that they believe in God, or they don't believe in God and that he's not real, and me saying or somebody saying that gravity isn't real because they've never seen it. It's the same thing to where it's, you can't see God if you're looking for a figure just like a human being. You can't see gravity if you're looking for something tangible like some sort of substance. You can't really hold or, or be given any of them physically. The difference between gravity and God is that gravity appears to your flesh. It only has to do with the flesh. It can only keep the flesh held down to the ground. The in God, with, with God, it appears to your spirit. It changes everything about your spirit and touches and applies to your spirit. So, just thinking a little bit more about it, I was thinking in my head, well, why don't people want to believe in God? But they believe in everything else that people say is true or all these other facts. They say, well, you know, scientists have proven that, that gravity is real. If I were to say, well, how do you know gravity is real? They would say, you know, scientists have proved that. And I would say, okay, well, you're not considering the fact that millions of people for thousands of years have been talking about the reality of God and have expressed proof and, and, and emotion, have proof, uh, expressed proof physically, um, mentally, and obviously spiritually, yet it's not enough proof for those who are hearing about this stuff to actually believe it or even consider the fact that God is real or that His Spirit is real. So thinking more about it and going on and on about this on, my, on the treadmill, I came to the conclusion, it was very simple, you know, it says it all throughout the Word of God, that they don't want to come to the light because their deeds are evil. So, it, analyzing that verse just a little bit more, and that's a paraphrased version of, that, of, the, of the actual verse. But, getting deeper into that and dissecting that a little bit more, a, a lot of people who are of the flesh and are in the world, it's, it's not pleasing or, or attractive to come to something that would cause you to have to transform your life. And they get that idea through the Christians that they've seen or the experiences they've had in the past. Um, just looking at other Christians and hearing some of the principles that we speak of, you don't have to hear a whole lot about the true Word of God um, to, to realize that it's going to take some changing, it's going to take some giving up. So God doesn't apply to the flesh. He doesn't. He doesn't uh, promote anything that the flesh wants. And the flesh honestly wants the things uh, that appear to its senses. I mean, so God is not going to tell you to go get all the money in the world. He's not going to go tell you to have sex with every girl you can, or you know, devote your life 
to, to being richer, to having a great house and, and, and having a great body and building up everything on the outside. God is not going to do that. In fact, God will cause you to, to see those things as less important and cause you to, to, to realize that these things will perish. And that's, that's literally what he's done for me. But when I think about what people don't want to believe in God, they don't want to believe in something that won't apply to their flesh because they haven't really ever gotten in touch with their spirit. Um, and to be quite frank, they, a lot of them don't even believe in a spirit. All they believe in is what they see. So, all I want to say is that it's foolishness to think that there is no God or to tell yourself that there is no God. In Revelations it says a verse where it mentions the fact that when we look into the stars, and like I said, this is a broken down version as well, but when we look into the stars, when we look into the moon and the universe and the, the complexity of the human body and trees and plants and, 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 and animals, that should be enough to believe that there has to be some sort of creator. That all this didn't just come from nothing. Where did the universe come from? What, what, what is it in? How far out does it go? The reason we can't figure that out is because we're not thinking in a spiritual term. We're not thinking outside of what we can see. If I can't see how far the universe goes out, I gotta make up something. And that's literally what a lot of people have done, even back in the day when they created their own gods. I can't see this God. I've never, he's never talked to me. I've never, you know. Um, so they made their own gods. They molded it out of gold, and or they made their, their gods money, or women, or, or whatever. But they made up their own gods, something that they could control, something that they could have power over. Which is real foolishness, because I don't understand why you would have a god that you created, and that you have more power over, and that in, in an instant, one can be taken from you, or two, you could destroy. So, uh, the big question that I think a lot of Christians, and for me, I'm saying this for me, and I know a lot of my brothers and sisters say the same thing, is why won't they give God a chance? And I have pretty much laid it out right there. They don't want to have to change. They don't want to lose control of this life. I remember being in the world, I thought I had it all figured out, and for me that was good enough. But when I came to Christ I realized I didn't really know much about anything and the things that I did know were all lies. It was all things that I was taught by the enemy and that I tacked on from the world and belief systems that I created for myself. And uh, it was all, it was all empty. It was all temporary and all the things that I sought for pleasure and, and for fulfillment could be gone in an instant. And so, I look at God as something that can't be taken away from me. But anyways, I'm getting off subject. All I'm saying is that it's foolishness to believe that there is no God. It's foolishness to look at all of us around us and believe that there is no God. I don't know how else to say that. It's just how like, the word says. So, for a solution, one solution, we have to think about the fact and realize the fact that a true belief in God comes from an experience with God in some way, shape, or form. Some sort of experience with Him. That's how many of us know that God is real. We've seen Him move before our eyes. We've seen the change in ourselves. Uh, and that all came from us giving it a shot, giving it a chance and coming to a point where we realized that we didn't have it all figured out, or realizing that we wanted more, or that there was more to this life. So all we can do is, is evangelize and, and minister to people in love, and how we live before them, how we treat them, and by letting them know what God tells you to tell them concerning His Word and concerning their life. 
no more, no less. Those are things that we can do. Let's minister to them in action and in word. And prayer. That's probably one of the biggest ones. Pray for those who refuse to believe in God. Pray for an experience. We're not praying for anything bad to happen to them because it doesn't necessarily have to be a bad experience. But it could just be the light comes on one day. It could be a situation that they consider to be bad at that moment in time, but as long as it brings them to Christ, it ends up working out for their good and saving their soul. So, we pray for these people. And you give them what God tells you to give them. And if they reject it, and if they, they say something that, might, that, that would normally offend your flesh, don't let it. The Bible tells us to brush the dust off of our sandals and keep it moving. Pray for them and trust God to make the sea be watered and to make it manifest. That's all you can do. Well, leave your comments in the bottom or uh, in the box below. Um, this is something that I had to get off of my heart and I know there's so much more that could be added to this. I'd love to hear your insight or your perception or viewpoint on this, on, on the whole uh, situation of people not believing in God or choosing not to believe in God. Um, I'd like to hear about that. Uh, so comment, uh, subscribe to the channel if you haven't subscribed already. Like this video if you like it and if you think that it could bless somebody, uh, share it with somebody. And uh, have a blessed day. I love you and go light up the world.